Hi, it's Christiana Gaudette. I am here with a review for you of my brand new Moonchild Tarot. This deck came to me in a great way. You may have heard me say in the past that your tarot friends are your best friends. Well, case in point, I was teaching a class in Madison, Connecticut, and my friend Serena Fox came from Vermont to take the class. She's a tarotist. You can find her at Bean of the Fields Tarot. And she was using this deck in class. I had never seen it before, and I was so impressed with the images. I said so. And when I returned to Florida, guess what was waiting for me in my mailbox? So thank you, Serena. Okay, so the Moonchild Tarot is created by Danielle Noel. It's a self-published deck through her company, Starseed Designs. She is also the creator of the Star Child Tarot. Star Child Tarot is for those who identify as Starseed. Moon Child Tarot is for those who find spiritual power in the moon. Both are beautiful decks. This one is very much appropriate for me. If you would like to read my full review of this deck, you can find it on my website, christianagaudette.com. But let me show you what a beauty this deck is. First of all, it comes in this great box with a lift-off lid, so you won't necessarily need a separate pouch for this deck. Look at the detail here and also on the inside. And when you take the deck out, look at this. You are the dance of light and shadow. Isn't that great? So this deck comes with a really great book. This is not your standard LWB, Little White Book. This is 279 pages of tarot goodness. It is fully illustrated in color. And it turns out that Danielle Noel is a great writer as well as a great artist. One of the things I really like about this book, well, there are a few things I really like about this book. First of all, she tells us what she's doing with the images. So often I find that tarot artists don't tell us why they have depicted the card the way they have. And, you know, inquiring minds want to know. So she lets us know what was going on in her head when she created the images. She also includes in this book, ways to use the cards in meditation and magic, which I really appreciate. Now, to tell the truth, there is one thing I don't love in this book. She talks about tarot history, which is great, but she seems to give equal weight to what we see as current historical thinking for which she admits there is evidence and also the theories of tarot history that have pretty much been debunked for which there is no evidence. I have a problem with that. I really feel like we have to know the difference between the power of myth and the power of truth. And if I didn't find this deck so amazingly beautiful, that probably would have made me not like this deck. But the art is so good, she's entitled to her opinions, whatever. It's a great book. It's a great deck. Now, the deck is big, as you can see. It's got a matte gold finish on the edges, which is really nice. And you can see that the back is sort of gold, shiny, embossed, and reversible, which I really appreciate. And she does give reversed meanings in the book which I also appreciate. The deck is very traditional in its structure with one single exception. It has three extra cards. Now, I am not one who likes extra cards in a deck, but she explains them well in the book. They are beautiful. It doesn't really bother me. And if you don't like the extra cards, you don't have to use them. And she makes that clear in the book. So her art style is really very interesting. It, she uses pastel colors. 
she has she puts those pastel colors against sort of a black and white so the art is really striking she uses collage with photography i don't tend to like photographic decks but this one is an exception let me show you some of my favorite images in this deck first of all i want to let you know that the people in this deck uh, well, there's a lot of diversity here, and I think that's really important in a modern tarot deck. I love it that the Knight of Pentacles has a man bun. I don't know why I love that so much, but I do. I love the Empress in this deck. I love that she is dark-skinned and dreadlocked, and, and she just looks like someone you want to tell all your problems to. I love that. I love the High Priestess, probably most of all. In the High Priestess, you can see that she has really given a nod to the weight deck. And in fact, I think we can say that even though this artwork is, you know, unlike any other tarot art I've ever seen, it really is in the weight tradition. And there are quite a few times she tips her hat to weight, uh, maybe most specifically with this beautiful High Priestess card. I also want to show you the Wheel of Fortune, where you can see that she has actually included the wheel from Waite's Wheel of Fortune. Now, the four suits are traditionally named and numbered, as are the courts. She uses people in most of her cards, but not all. Uh, one thing I think is really fun is her Ten of Pentacles is Stonehenge. Now, another thing I really like is that the cards that are traditionally dark and scary, she manages to show the mood without showing a graphic, disturbing image. And I think that will make this deck really good for squeamish clients. I love her Death card where we see a woman dancing and we see insects and animals that transform as part of their life cycle, moths, butterflies, and snakes. If you take a look, you can see that her Ten of Swords, you know, and that's really usually the darkest image in the deck, you can see the mood of it, but you can see it is not as disturbing as a person lying bleeding with ten swords in their back. So I think, as I said, this is a good deck that you could use with clients. I'm a little concerned about shuffling it. You know, can I make this my professional workhorse? Given that it's, it's the, the cardstock is wonderful. This deck is going to last forever. But shuffling it, laying it out on a table, it's big. I'm not sure how that's going to work in professional readings for me, but you know what? I'm going to give it a try because it is such a beautiful deck and I think it will really resonate with my clients as it resonates with me. I feel like this would be a great beginner deck and I also feel like this would be a great addition to any collection. You can get this deck directly from the artist uh, through Starseed Designs. It is not a cheap deck. The deck retails at $65. That's more than I'm used to paying for a new in-print deck. But you know what? I think it's worth every penny. Thank you so much for taking this time to look at these cards with me. If you're interested in them, I hope you pick up a set for yourself. And again, if you'd like to read my full review, you can do so on my website. Thanks so much. I will look forward to seeing you again soon.